So let's talk about 8.1. We now have eight minutes left, so I'll just talk for three more minutes. Um, in 8.1, we're going to do a little bit of graphing, not too much, but I want you to notice some things that happen often between our, our graphs. So we're going to call these things linear functions because, well, what's linear mean? Line? Yeah, these are functions that make lines. So that's what we're going to be talking about here. And our first example, I'd like to graph a couple things. We're going to graph, you're familiar with that notation, we've already had that in this class, that just means f of x, it means a function, this thing's going to make a graph for us. f of x equals 3x, g of x equals 3x minus 4. What we're going to do is we're going to graph these functions on the same graph, and we're going to use some tables to make this up. So I know you've seen tables before because we've done it in here. When we make up a table, I told you that we're going to use how many points when we're talking about lines? Three. Yeah, really you only need two, but we want to make sure we have it right, so we're going to use three as kind of a check for us. And we want something negative, we want zero, we want something positive. We're going to use the same ones over here. Now, of course, we have f of x, not a y, but it works the same way. So on this column, we're going to put f of x. It stands for the y variable, or the dependent variable. And over here, we'll have g of x. Can someone explain to me how I get this column, what I do? Replace x in the in 3 times negative 1. Good, okay. So what this says is I want to plug in my independent variable of x, so negative 1. Whatever I get out of this is my f of x. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so we go, all right. We plug in negative 1. What are we going to get over here? Perfect. And that gives us a point. Negative 1, negative 3. Awesome. If I plug in 0, if I substitute in 0, how much do I get? Good. 3 times 0 is 0. And if I plug in 1, I'm going to get 3 out of that. 3 times 1 gives us our 3. And we have a point 1 comma 3. Now, if we're to graph this on an x-y axis, which I hope you remember how to do that, we just have to plot all three points, make sure it's a straight line, and then, and then graph the thing. So when we plot negative 1, negative 3, hopefully you remember that means from the origin I go to left 1, down 3, and I put a point. 0, 0 says you're right at the origin. And 1, 3 says I go right 1, I go up 1 from the origin, and I put a point right there. We've done this before, so I'm going quickly, quickly through it because we've done this in the review. Does it look right to you? Look about like a straight line? If I'd had something like this, and then this, and then this, I'd probably have done something wrong. I mean, you, you want to go back and fix that. So here we've got about a pretty good looking straight line. Oh, that, that's good. Look at it, look at it. Isn't that fantastic? Oh, it's the best I've ever done. I'm so happy. This is the sort of thing math teachers get excited about. I know it's ridiculous, but this, this is it for us. Straight lines and good looking parabolas. You don't even know what that is yet. Okay, so we have our, our first line, and what we do, and this is why we use the, the different names like f of x and g of x instead of just all being y, is now if we're, we're going to draw this one on the same graph, we can identify as this was the function f of x. So, oh, okay, that's my line f of x. Now when I put g of x up there, we'll be able to tell the difference between them. They'll be in different positions, and we'll say, oh, this came from this function, this came from this function. Does that make sense to you? Okay, now, as far as the g of x goes, we're going to do the same exact thing, so let's do this all together. This says we're going to plug in negative 1 to here. So you tell me what's 3 times negative 1. And then minus 4. So I'm going to get out negative 7 here. And I get the point negative 1, negative 7. If I plug in 0, I get 3 times 0 minus 4. That gives me what, folks? Good. So 0, negative 4. And I plug in 1, I get 3 times 1 minus 4. That is how much? 
How many people feel comfortable getting those points? Raise your hand if you do. Okay, good. So we're just plugging those numbers in. We're, seeing, we're evaluating it. It's giving us a point out. If I plot those points, I have negative 1, negative 7. I have 0, negative 4. I have 1, negative 1. Hmm, see, that was good. Let's make those bigger. There we go. And this is the graph g of x. Now, a couple things. Firstly, both these, these graphs are called functions because they pass something called the vertical line test. We're going to cover what the vertical line test is in more detail later on. But basically, if you imagine a whole bunch of vertical lines, verticals this way, every vertical line should touch each of these lines at only one spot. It means the, the graph can't ever double back on itself. Otherwise, it's not a function. So here, the, look at the black line, the f of x. Every vertical line touches that at only one spot. Every vertical line touches the g of x at only one spot. Do you see what I'm talking about? That means that these things are called functions. So that's great. Firstly, I want you to notice, well, there's two questions we're going to answer today. Do you see where these graphs cross the y-axis? Where's f of x cross the, firstly, show me with your hands, what's the y-axis? This way? This way. Which one? Show me with your hands. Good. Yeah, look around. So if you don't know, just kind of look around. Yeah, that's, this is the y-axis. So I want to know, where, does the, where do these graphs cross the y-axis? How about f of x? Where does it cross the y-axis? Okay, good. It goes right down here, y-axis, right at zero. How about g of x? Where does that cross the y-axis? Negative four, okay. Now, we talked about this a little bit, but I want you to look back at the functions themselves, the equations. Do you see a coincidence here? Before we come... Before we even talk about that, I want you to look back at this. Do you see the, the similarities? What's similar between these two graphs? Yeah. The 3x. Okay. Notice how we have a 3x here. We've got a 3x here. Then we have, oh, what's, what's, what's over here? How much yeah. is that? Zero over here. And we have a minus 4 over here. Look at where these things cross. This had minus 4. Where does it cross on the y? That will always give you your y-intercept right there. That right there. <coughs> Notice how this has zero. This doesn't have, doesn't have anything added or subtracted to or from it. That's going to cross at y equals zero. Look what it does. It says plus zero. Oh, cross at zero. Minus four, cross at negative four. How many people see that? Okay. One other thing. Are these, what makes these lines look the same? There's a word for that. The word about how lines go up or how lines go down. Say it louder. The slope. I want you to look and see about these lines. Are these lines ever going to intersect with each other? No. Ah, they're going up the, it's like walking stairs. The reason why you, the stairs work is because, in the same building, is because they go up at the same rate, right? So you can have several floors stacked on top of each other because if you walk upstairs, they're not like this. Because then you'd be like walking up and go, oh, oh crap. You know? <laughs> if your stairs weren't parallel, that's what would happen. Right? That wouldn't be very good at all. It would be very short or something. Uh, or do the limbo. But there, there's parallel still the stairs. They're never, ever going to meet. And that's what's happening to these lines. So these, are, these lines are going up just like stairs do. The slope of each of these is exactly the same. In fact, we're going to learn that this number right here, that 3, represents the slope. And if we have the same exact slope, we have lines which are parallel. So these, these aren't ever going to meet because these two numbers, the 3 and the 3, are exactly the same. We're going to talk about the functions, linear functions, next time. How you understood the introduction to graphs here? Good. Good deal. All right. So today, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and continue talking about some linear functions. Now, what we were doing is we were figuring out that linear means line, so we're, we're pretty much just graphing lines. And there's two uh, types of equations we'll be using in this class. You've seen both of them, I'm sure, from your math A, but I want to, it's, it's worth repeating them. So, there's ty two types of linear functions.
The first one looks like this. Have you seen that form before? What's it called? You can, you can all say it louder. This is the slope intercept form. That's exactly right. You know, the thing about math is that sometimes the names aren't very creative. Like this could be called the awesome function or the yellow function or something weird, but it, it's not. They're just pretty much named after what you need or what it gives you. So when you're talking about the slope-intercept form of a line, it's called slope-intercept because it gives you, well, the slope and, and the intercept. And we're talking about the y-intercept in this case. So the reason why this is called the slope-intercept is because it gives you the slope and the y-intercept. Uh, which letter up here represents the slope? The M, that's right. So M is our slope. Hey, by the way, talking about slope, what is slope? See that letter for me? Like stairs, it's rise of a run. If you, if you ever work in construction, you're going to talk about the slope of a roof or the pitch of a roof, which is the same thing. It's how much the roof goes up compared to how much it goes over. If you have a very steep slope or a very steep roof, it's going to look like this. Uh, like in the, in the mountains, sometimes you see that so the snow goes off of it. If you have a really, really uh, shallow roof, it's going to be, be like that, right? Mm -hmm. Down here in the valley, we don't have very steep roofs compared to other parts of the country. Ours, ours are like this. Um, that, well, that's a slope of it, how much is going up compared to how much is going over. So when we talk about slope, what we really are talking about is the comparison of how much the line is going up or down compared to how much it's going over. Or rise over run is how you normally say that. The run isn't like you're jogging, right? You're not, you're not jogging. It's, it's how much you're going over to the right. That's what the run is, is denoting here. What's our intercept? Is it the x, the y, or the b? The x and the y, those are just our variables because we have, well, we have two axes, right? The x-axis and the y-axis. That gives us directions on how to make our line. So m is our slope. B is not just any intercept. It's not the x-intercept, it's the y-intercept. That's the one that, that we talk about most often. So B stands for the y-intercept. And if you remember from our last example yesterday, we had a form like this, and we found out, we graphed two of them. We found out that this number, if, and sure enough, gives us the y-intercept, gives us where it's crossing the y-axis, and this number right here gave us our slope. In the previous example, uh, that number was the same, stating that we had parallel lines. They were going up at the same rate. Another example, if you, if you need one here. That line right there, is that line in slope-intercept form? Yes. If you have y on one side, and then we have x plus some number, you're in slope-intercept form. Now, what I'd like to do is figure out what is our slope and what is our y-intercept. Firstly, the, the easy one, what's the y-intercept here? Three. Good, just that number off to the back. Three is our y-intercept. What that means for us, we're going to graph this line at the same time because when you do slope-intercept, man, it's so nice to graph those lines. You don't need a table. You don't need that t-table to plug in points. You don't have to do that. How many points do you need to graph a line? Two, two. We usually use three on the